Step 3. Well state measurements 2. In this step, we will talk about how to actually implement a bell state measurement with linear optics. So, the actual scheme of how to do it really depends on our encoding. So let's just pick some encoding for our qubits. And let's choose linear polarized single photons. There's two reasons behind that. One is that it's one of the most easily used encodings in real experiments. And two, it's very easy to imagine what's going on. Therefore, it is, it is intuitive. And in this encoding, we encode our qubit in a state zero as a single photon that's polarized in the vertical direction and uh, our um, other computational basis state one as a single photon polarized in the horizontal direction. So the first question that we should ask is, how do we implement a Pauli Z measurement with this encoding? Well, we have to measure uh, and distinguish the two different uh, polarizations. We have to distinguish horizontal and vertical. That can be done with a, a little piece of crystal called polarizing beam splitter. What happens is that if you have some photons or some light coming in with uh, some polarization, it splits the beam of light into two beams. One that is transmitted through the polarizing beam splitter, but comes out at the other end only uh, with a vertical polarization. And the other one that gets reflected by the polarizing beam splitter, and that's, um, that one is polarized in the horizontal direction. So we see that we are splitting our beam of light into two beams, one for our zero and one for our one. So consider that we have a single photon polarized in the vertical direction and we place two detectors after the polarizing beam splitter to detect in which path was, which path was taken by the single photon. So what happens, as we saw before, if the photon is vertically polarized, it gets transmitted through the polarizing beam splitter. Therefore, it gets detected by this detector here with probability 1. This represents our measurement for plus 1. It never happens that a vertically polarized photon gets reflected. Therefore, this detector never gets triggered. So the probability of the outcome minus 1 is always 0. On the other hand, if our initial photon is horizontally polarized, then you might guess it always gets reflected and travels down into this detector here, triggers it and always gets detected. So the probability of the outcome minus 1 is 1 and the probability of the outcome plus 1 is always 0. Now, can you guess what happens if we actually put in a superposition? of these two linear polarizations. Our state is given by alpha v plus beta h. What happens is that the photon has a chance to get transmitted and this probability is given by mod alpha squared and it also has a chance to get reflected and travel down into this other beam splitter corresponding to the measurement outcome minus one and the probability of getting a minus one which means probability of triggering this detector is given by mod beta squared. So this implements our Z measurement. But we have seen in the previous step that for a Bell state measurement, we need two measurements in the Z basis and a suitable unitary. So let's, let's see what happens when we actually take two polarizing beam, splitter, beam splitters, each with two detectors, and we have just a regular 50-50 beam splitter over here, and we've got two photons coming from the, these paths. So let's, to be able to analyze this, we actually have not developed the proper tools. For that, we need uh, a little bit more of quantum optics, but we can uh, give you the result. So depending on which of these detectors trigger, we will know which Bell state has been measured. So let's see what the different patterns are. And to not get confused, we will label our detectors as detector D1, D2, D3, and D4. So if we get a joint detection in detectors 
d1 and d4, this means that we have implemented a successful Bell measurement and the outcome corresponds to the projection onto the state psi minus. Also, if we get a joint detection in these two detectors, in D2 and D3, joint detection means that both of these detectors trigger. Then we can also say that we have implemented a successful Bell measurement and the result corresponds to the state psi minus. A different pattern of detection that we can get is a joint detection at these two uh, detectors in the lower branch of our Bell state analyzer. So if both D1 and D2 trigger, then we can conclude that we have a state Psi plus. So this corresponds to another successful Bell measurement. Equally, if we get uh, detectors triggering in these in the right branch of our Bell state analyzer, so if both D3 and D4 trigger, then we can also conclude they've got, we've got a Bell state Psi plus. What can uh, also happen is that both photons travel into a single detector, for example, a D1, or they might travel into D2, or D3, or D4. All of these are equally probable. However, then we cannot say that whether we have phi plus or a phi minus. So whenever we get only one of these detectors triggering, we know that we have one of the state psi plus or psi minus, but we cannot tell which one. And this is a bit of a problem because we cannot fully implement a Bell state measurement. We cannot distinguish all four uh, Bell states. We can only distinguish two of them, psi plus and psi minus. So, this means that a Bell state measurement cannot always be successfully implemented with linear optics. Actually, the maximum probability is limited to only 50%. So, we, we have seen in a previous uh, lesson that quantum repeaters have to contend with a lot of noise. We have to deal with that noise. We have to purify our states to uh, counteract the effects of this noise. We have also seen in previous lessons that we have to deal with uh, uh, lossy fibers which was the reason why we started talking about quantum repeaters. But even if we take away all of the sources of error, there is still a fundamental error in the fact that Bell state measurement cannot be always successfully uh, executed with linear optics. On top of that, what we have to take into account is that the two photons coming into our Bell state analyzer have to be synchronized. They have to arrive at the same time. If they don't arrive at the same time, we fail our Bell state measurement and we cannot establish entanglement uh, between um, the network nodes.